I'm going to talk to you about groups management. We will cover set organizational wide policies for using groups, create a group and configure group settings, add users to groups individually and bulk via CSV, remove users from a group, give a group an additional alias address, assign roles to group members, add a group to another group, add all your organization's users to a group. A group can be used for communication or collaboration, including email lists. Send email to all group members with a single address. Invite group members to a meeting. Share content with group members, including documents, sites, videos, and calendars. Participate in discussions or a collaborative inbox at groups.google.com. Turn a service on for a group. Configure service settings for a group. As an administrator, you can set organization-wide options to control who can access, create, and participate in groups that you use as Google Groups app. For example, you might decide that only admins can create groups, but users can view, manage messages and posts. Or you might let users or even external customers create and manage groups. No matter what options you select, group addresses still appear as suggestions when typing addresses in Gmail or calendar invitations. So if you want to set organizational uh, wide policies, you come over here to the left hand side to apps and then you come over here to groups for business. And now you'll have the option to check your sharing settings. So the first option here is accessing groups from outside this organization. Um, so choose whether people outside your organization can access your groups. Group owners can further restrict access as needed. So public on the internet means anyone on the internet can view, search for, and post to groups. And private, no one outside your organization can view or search for your groups. External users can email the group if group settings allow them. Private here is the default. Now we come down to creating groups. So you can say groups can be created by admins. Anyone in the organization, anyone in your Google tenant can create a group. Anyone on the internet can only be selected if public on the internet is selected here. The next one is group owners can allow external members. This is unchecked by default. So you can allow group owners to add external, external people to your groups. Um, so group owners can allow incoming email from outside the organization. This is unchecked by default. So group owners can allow email from the outside into your groups. So the default for permission to view conversations is owners only, owners and managers, all group members, all organization users. Anyone on the internet can only be selected if public on the internet is selected here. Um, so this is the default permissions for any new groups that you create. Uh, so group owners can also hide groups from the directory. This is unchecked by default. So this means it can be hidden from the group's directory if you want to create a group, you come over here to the left hand side of the directory and then select groups. And now when you're in here, you click on create group. Now, so you're going to enter a name that identifies the group in lists and messages. And the guidelines are the names can be up to 73 characters long. And you should use a name that makes it easy to identify the group's purpose. So our group name is info. So now I'm going to enter the group email address. And the addresses can be 63 characters long, and that's the characters before the at symbol. Um, so I'm going to name this info. And now we're going to give the group a description. Um, so enter the purpose of the group or how it's going to be used. The information appears in the group's about page. You could include information about group members, group content, uh, an FAQ, links to related groups, and so on. You can enter group owners in here before you actually create the group. And finally down here you can see labels, which are mailing. So for email and distribution lists or security and this the security groups are for controlling access to sensitive data and resources. And you can't remove this label afterwards. So for the moment, I'm just going to leave this as a mailing list and click next. Now we come to the access settings. And you can see here there's group access types predefined up here at the top. You can have public and you can see the 
boxes that are ticked here. You can click team. So anyone in your organization can post to the group, but they must ask to join. Announcement only. Only group owners and managers can post to the group and anyone in your organization can join. Are restricted. Restricted. Only group owners, managers and members can post to the group and people in your organization must ask to join. So I'm going to leave it at public and now I'm going to explain what each one is. So the first access setting here is who can, who can contact the group owners. Specifies who can email who can directly email group owners and that's group owners, group managers, group members, entire organization or external. Um, who can view conversations specifies who can view conversations posted in the group. Non-members outside of your organization external can only view conversations if groups of business sharing options are set to public on the internet. Um, who can post specifies who can send and publish messages to the group. Who can view members specifies who can view group members and who can join the group anyone in the organization can ask anyone in the organization can join our only invited users and finally you've allowed members outside your organization and for right now i want external people to be able to email this group so i'm going to select external here for who can post and you can see here this is automatically changed to custom external means anyone outside of this google google account can send messages to this group so now that's all the access settings now i'm going to click next so now you can select restrictions and uh, this is an enterprise only feature so you may not see this if you don't have an enterprise version and now I can select create group. And now the info address is created. I click done. And now you can see info is here. Now I want to add people into this info group. So if I click on info address, and now we have the option here to add members. And I'm going to show you adding a member individually. So the option here, add members. And now I'm going to type in a user's email address. I want to add this user into the group, so I click on add to group. Now you won't see the member appear immediately, you may have to wait a few seconds. So if I click refresh, and now you can see the user appear. Now I'm going to show you how to bulk upload members to a group. So we're back in our info address. So I have to click here on upload members. You'll have the option to download a blank CSV template. That will download to your computer and you can edit it either in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, so that will download to your computer, you can open it in Sheets. So here is one that I prepared earlier. So the maximum CSV file size is 35 megabytes. The maximum number of records per file is 150,000. If your file is larger or has too many records, open it in your spreadsheet program. Split the table into separate files and save each one as a CSV file. Um, so this is an example here. Um, so the group email, it's going to be the info address that I've just specified. Um, so the member email is the email address of the user on your domain that you want to add. Um, so you can see my four members here. The member type can be either user, group, customer, or service account. User is used to add a single user. Group, used to add a Google group. Customer used to add all users in the organization. If you use this member type, leave the member email field empty. And service account is used to add a service account. The member role is going to be either member, manager, or owner. So now I'm happy that I have all the fields there and they're all going to go into my info address. I'm going to download this as a CSV file to my computer. And now I'm going to bulk upload. I'm going to back in here. I'm going to select upload members and I'm going to attach the CSV file that I downloaded earlier. So I'm going to upload that and now I'm going to click upload.
and now all the four members have been added. If you want to remove a user from a group, if I come back in here to my info address, if I want to remove this user, for example, I hover over them and click remove. So this user won't receive emails from the group and you might and might not be able to view forum posts, messages of days sent to the group won't be deleted. So if I click remove. So he's been removed and it might take some time for changes to reflect. And now the user has been removed from the group. You can add alternate addresses called email aliases to your organization's groups. So to add an email alias to the info address, I want to come in here to the info. I want to click on group information and I'm going to give it an alias. I'm going to give it hello at test.devscloud.com. Click done. And now you can see hello at test.devscloud has been created. So any email sent to hello at test.devscloud.com will go to the group members for info at test.devscloud.com. Exactly like you would do for a user. Now I'm going to talk about group member roles. You can assign roles to members of any group in your organization, whether or not you created the group. Within a group, each role has certain permissions to determine who can view, post, and moderate content and manage members in that group. By default, members with the owner role have all permissions for a group. Many of these permissions can be assigned to other sets of users. Only an owner can delete a group, make another group member an owner, change another owner's settings, export groups messages using Google Takeout. Only group owners and managers can change group settings. If you're signed into a work or school account for a given group, an administrator can remove some owner permissions, but not others. Can remove, post permissions or add, invite or approve new members. Cannot remove, view members or conversations or contact other owners. A group can't be an owner of another group. Administrators are automatically assigned the owner role for all groups in an organization including groups that users create. Assigning someone the owner role gives them the greatest control over the group, so I recommend keeping the number of owners low. By default, the managers can do everything that owners can do except these three things. Delete a group, make another member an owner, or change an owner's role or subscription settings. Group owners can set any permission to owner only, further limiting what managers can do. However, managers always have the ability to adjust permissions to include managers, and a group can't be a manager of another group. By default, group members have basic permissions. Depending on the organization and group settings, these permissions might include viewing and posting to conversations and viewing members. Group owners and managers can add to or limit members' permissions. Any permissions that are set for the member role are automatically given to managers and owners. If you want to change the the role of a user in a group. You come into your one of the groups here, and I select say this user, and I change this Becky from a member to a manager. Now I come down here to the bottom of the screen and click save. And now she's a manager. Sometimes it's helpful to add one group to another. For example, if you have a group for each team that's part of a larger department, you can save the time it takes to individually add each member to a larger department group. Larger groups are called parent groups. Added groups are nested, child, or subgroups. You might nest groups to have messages you post to the parent group posted to the child. You can do this if a child's posting permissions allow it. Change members of the parent group by editing the child. This works if multiple parent groups contain the same child group. Because child group members don't belong to parent groups, they can't leave the parent group, don't appear as members of the parent group, can't change their membership settings in the parent group. If a Google Docs file is shared with a parent group, child group members can also access the doc. If a parent group allows all members of the group to post, members of the child group can also post to the parent group. Now I'm going to add the support group into the info group. So I come into the info address and I come to members. And now I'm going to add the members. So I'm going to add support. You can see here, this is a group. So I'm going to add support into the info address. 
So one member has been added. It may take some time for the changes to reflect. And now you can see support is now a member of the info group. You can see the difference between what a group looks like and an individual user looks like. You can add all your organization's users to a group. This is useful for organization-wide mailing lists and announcements. So I have a group called the team here. So this is going to be an all domain users group. So I'm going to come in here to add members. I'm going to select add members here at the top. And then come down here to advanced. So I'm going to check. You can add all users in DC test domain account at once. New users will be automatically added to the group as they join your organization. So I'm going to tick the box, add all current and future users of DC test domain account to this group with all email settings. So I'm going to add that to the group. So I've added one member to the group. It may take some time for the changes to reflect. So I'm going to refresh the page. So now you can see all users are added as a single member called all users in the organization. Members are added or removed automatically as they enter and leave the organization. In addition, you can edit the group's access settings or delete the group. If multiple domains are associated with your organization's managed Google account, the group includes all users in all your domains. And only administrators can create organization-wide groups. The last thing I want to show you is, is the Groups for Business interface itself. And you get there by visiting groups.google.com. Uh, the first thing you see is my groups, which is the which is the groups I'm a member of. If I want to see all the groups in the domain, I click here on all groups. Um, I can see all the groups because I'm a domain administrator. Um, so these are all the groups. As an administrator, I can see them all. Um, so if I go back to my groups, so I can actually create a group from here. So you can exactly like we did in the admin console. Um, you can give a group a name, give a group email, and give it a description, and you go through the steps of creating a group from here as well. Um, so what users can see in the groups of business interface is directly related to their group role and permissions we configured earlier while creating a group in the admin panel. So if I click on the info group here, I can see all the conversations. Um, that have been sent to this group. So this is the group forum. I can click into any one of these and you can see there. So I'll go back to all groups again. So if I come in here to the info address, I can actually add members to the group directly here. So I'm going to add one user in here. Um, I'm going to make him a member. And the subscription is going to be each email and I can click add members and Alex Alexander will be added to this group. I can configure group settings in here as well. So if you click on group settings, I can see the group name, I can see the group email, I can see the description, I can add a welcome message here if I want. I could make this in a collaborative inbox. I can say who can see the group, who can join the group, who can view conversations, who can post, view members, identification required for new members, who can contact the group owners, who can view member email addresses, um, allow email posting, allow web posting, conversation history, who can provide, reply privately to authors, who can attach files, um, who can moderate content, who can moderate metadata, who can post as the group. Um, the default sender is either going to be author's address or the group address. You can select message moderation. Um, new member restrictions for posting, um, spam handling, um, email options, a subject prefix, you can add a footer, you can do auto replies, post replies to the group, uh, conversation mode, um, member moderation, you can create custom roles, and finally you can delete the group here. And any of the settings that can be changed here can only be either done by a, an owner or a manager. Um, so the last thing I want to show you there is if I click on members over here on the left. So if I click on members, you can see all the individual members. I can change their roles here if I want to. I can make Alex a manager. It will be changed. 
I can change their subscription, whether they get each email, whether they get a digest, whether they get an abridged email, or whether they get no emails posted from the group. And I can also change individually if they're allowed to send messages to the group, whether they're allowed or not allowed.